Hey everyone, my name is Matt Selensky with NUIT's Research Computing Services, and today we're talking about how to debug your job on Quest. So at some point in your use of Northwestern's high-performance computing cluster Quest, you will likely experience some type of error that causes your job to fail. While these failed jobs can be frustrating, there are some easy steps you can take to quickly identify and resolve the underlying issue. This video demonstrates common errors encountered by Northwestern researchers on Quest and how you can go about solving them. There are several types of errors that can result in your job to fail. Oftentimes, these errors arise from problems in your Slurm header information and your submission script, but issues with your Quest account, not having enough storage space in your home and or project directories, and your code itself can also cause fatal errors. Each underlying issue gives us clues we can take advantage of to get your job back on track. We will discuss these issues in the context of three common error categories from a batch job as an example case, but these solutions apply to interactive jobs initiated by srun and salloc as well. One way to think about debugging your job is to follow this simple decision tree. Errors that Quest users experience usually fall into three major categories. The Slurm scheduler might immediately reject your job, the job may immediately fail with no output, or the job might be accepted by the Slurm scheduler, but something is wrong about the output. We will walk through these major error categories and will provide examples of the most common issues within each one. We will use this job script as an example throughout the video. Error messages you might encounter will appear as red text under the script, while useful commands you can run on Quest will appear in these light purple boxes. The first category we'll talk about is when jobs are rejected by the Slurm scheduler and you receive an immediate error message. You may find that you successfully run a script one day, and then months later you try to run the same script, but it fails with some sort of QoS error. If this happens, your allocation is likely expired. You can check the status of your allocation by running the check project allocation ID command. To resolve this error, simply submit a renewal request to the Research Computing Services team. The links to the application are found in the video description below or in this QR code. A similar issue can arise if you are not a part of the allocation specified in the account or "-a field." You can check your allocation memberships by running the groups command on your NetID. If you do not see the allocation listed from this output, you will have to request to join the allocation. The link to the join allocation web form can be found in the video description or through this QR code as well. Another issue you may encounter may arise if your submission script might be specifying partitions that do not actually go together with your account. For example, if you have a buy-in allocation and attempt to run a job on a general access partition, such as the short or normal queue, you will receive this fatal QoS error. For more information on choosing the appropriate partition for your job, visit the knowledge base page about Quest partitions and queues found in the video description. You may also encounter this particular error, dash dash something required. Every job submitted to Quest requires the account, partition, and time options. If any of these are omitted in your submission script, your job will immediately fail. Make sure every S batch or S run job has at least these three options. If you have typos in one or more of the S batch options specified in your submission script, you may encounter the unrecognized option error. If you see this one, carefully inspect your sbatch options for any typos and resubmit your job. The presence of hidden characters in your submission script can also cause unexpected issues. A common way these characters can appear in your script is if you wrote it while using Windows and copied it to Quest without ensuring that the characters are Unix encoded. You can attempt to fix this by running the dus to unix command on your submission script, but the best way to avoid this error entirely is to write your scripts in a native Unix editor. The next major category we'll discuss 
include those jobs that are accepted by the Slurm scheduler, but they end up failing on the compute nodes. In this situation, you might not receive an error upon submitting a job, but it might instantly fail once it starts on a compute node. One common issue that causes this behavior is incorrectly specifying the output and or error options. Both options require a path to a named file. If that path doesn't exist, or if it only leads to a directory instead of a file, this fatal error will occur and your job will fail immediately. Before submitting a job, you can run the make directory command with the dash p flag ensuring that the directory is made only if it doesn't already exist. This will ensure that Slurm can find the desired directory path to your standard output or error. If your job fails after a significant amount of time, you may not be requesting enough memory in your submission script. Oftentimes, your job state will say out of memory if this happens. You can determine whether your job was given enough memory by running the sf command. A good general rule to follow is to request 10% more memory than you expect your job to require. Be mindful of reserving too much memory, though, as that will increase your job's wait time because it's requesting more resources. You may also encounter errors if your home directory or your project directory is full. Quest users are granted a certain amount of storage in their home directory. When this folder is close to being full, your experience on Quest will be more sluggish in general. You can check your home directory's disk usage by running the home du command. This command might take a while to complete, but it is a very useful diagnostic tool. If you are approaching the 80 gigabyte limit, move or delete files as necessary to free up space. To avoid this problem entirely, we strongly suggest making your allocation directory into your working directory as you submit jobs on Quest. Similarly, though, if your script attempts to write an output to your allocation directory that is full, your job will also fail. You can check the available storage of your allocation via the check project command. Another error you might encounter could arise from modules or environmental variables being inherited from your login session once you gain access to a compute node. This can cause unexpected conflicts between the versions of software modules your code might call. In this example, perhaps your user path contains an executable that happens to share the same name as BWA. So if you submit a script with this conflicting executable, your job will likely fail. To avoid this issue, it is always good practice to include the line module purge all immediately after your SBatch options. This creates a clean user path for your job. Are you still experiencing errors after going through the solutions we've discussed? If so, a good place to start with debugging is to examine the output file specified in sbatch-output. If this sbatch option is not defined, the output file will be saved to your home directory as slurm -the -job -id out by default. If something in the code you're trying to execute itself is causing your job to fail, like if you accidentally include this typo in your Python code as an example, examining the job output file will be particularly helpful with troubleshooting. We hope this video was informative and helps you debug your job on Quest. If you need more assistance, please reach out to quest-help at northwestern.edu and we will be more than happy to troubleshoot with you.